Hello Internet, Oscar Lee here showing you how to use another approach to finding roots called fixed point iteration. So how does fixed point iteration work? First, if we're given an f of x, we'll set it to zero and then write it so that way we have x is equal to something. Then we'll label the left side as x sub n plus one and the right side with x sub n. Then we'll go ahead and pick an x one and plug it into our equation and repeat it with every new x until it converges. So if we're given an example of where we want to find where x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0, here's how we'll do it. So using fixed point iteration, we'll set x in terms of something. And there's a few ways to do that. One way is to say that x squared is equal to x plus 1, and therefore x is equal to 1 plus 1 over x. So x sub n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 1 over x sub n. We can also say this that x squared minus x is equal to 1. Therefore, if we factor out an x and we divide by that, we can say x is equal to 1 over x minus 1 and label it accordingly. Here's another approach that looks like a good idea but turns out not to be because we set x equal to plus or minus the square root of x plus 1, which gives us two answers for x sub n plus 1, which is not a good way to go. So go ahead and evaluate both of these. First, the left side. We'll go ahead and pick x sub 1 to be a value of 2. Plug that into our equation to find x2, which turns out to be 1.5. Plug x2 into our equation to find x3, and so on and so forth. It looks that these values seem to be converging on the value 1.618. On our other equation, let's go ahead and start closer to the root. We'll pick x1 equal to 1.6, and it should converge that much faster. Plug in x1 to find x2, x2 to find x3, and so on. Although it looks like our values are growing rather than shrinking. And indeed, this does not converge. So why is it the left equation converged and not the right one? When does convergence occur? Remember that we set x n plus 1 equal to something? We'll go ahead and call that something g of x. So if we do some fancy math, we come up to the conclusion that if g prime at the root is less than 1, the function will converge. This is basically saying that the error after every iteration is getting smaller, which we would expect in a converging function. So now let's examine our two equations that we had earlier. With our first equation, we'll go ahead and call that g of x. If we take the derivative of g of x, we can get g prime. Plug in the root for that value, and we get negative 0 0.381, etc which turns out to be less than 1 in absolute value. Therefore, this one converges. On our other side, we'll go ahead and also call that g of x, find our g prime of x, and plug in our root, which equates to about negative 2.618, greater than 1 in absolute value. Therefore, this one does not converge. Now, about the order of fixed point iteration, it really does depend on the function you start with. You remember that we said x of n plus 1 is equal to g of x, and how that if g prime at the root is less than 1, we said it will converge. If g prime at the root is exactly equal to 0, however, the function converges quadratically, at least. And if we take the derivative of g prime to find g double prime, if that is also equal to 0 at r, then the function will converge with order 3, and the pattern continues. So if g triple prime at r is also equal to 0, then it will converge of order 4, and so on and so forth. Please also note that Newton's method is actually a special case of fixed point iteration. Thanks for watching.